Hello everyone, this is Julie from August Birdsong and I am bringing you my August Design Team Journal and I decided to get a head start on the Halloween season with my crafting and so I made this visual journal that I titled Into Darkness We Go and I gave it this title for two reasons. I was thinking of children trick-or-treating and, um, you know, that the fun of going out at night and roaming the neighborhood and as you got older, doing that with your friends too. And also for the mystery uh, surrounding Halloween and that, you know, season of magic and ghost stories and, you know, witches and spirits. And so this is a look at uh, the history of Halloween as, you know, the traditions that we have today. Uh, and uh, I'm going to take you on that now. On the cover here, this is an upcycled Better Homes and Gardens sewing binder. And it was white. So I painted the edges, the spine, all of that black, but then I actually attached uh, a stitched piece of black cardstock. And I did that on the back and on the inside, as well as the front cover. Then I put down uh, some segments of stitched jelly prints that I had in my stash. And so that's what you see here in the blue and with the gray. And with the jelly prints, uh, I just do basic jelly printing, nothing fancy. This might be a, a print I pull. And when you add some distress ink and then stitch it, it suddenly sort of takes on a new uh, personality and you know some in some cases good enough to be a page or I rip it might use it for borders or other accents so it's very basic you don't need to be an expert to just you know really use jelly prints in your art um, you can see I've added this flying owl up here uh, from the Owls and Mushrooms bundle. And here we have this beautiful, I, I call her like sort of a night goddess uh, or lady knight. And if you look at her closely, she has this beautiful gown and uh, here's even an owl on it. And she's decorated in stars and it's it's a headdress. Maybe it's supposed to be the sun or a sunflower. I always look at her headdress here and think of a crescent moon, though. So I, I'm calling her Lady Night or Lady Moon. And I had just enlarged her when you go into the bundle. And um, this one, she was in either the Masquerade Ball bundle or the Pose Halloween. I think she might be with the Masquerade Ball. And I just enlarged her and put her on and if you can see it i have the the gauzy like wedding veil material surrounding her just to add extra sparkle and the greens and gold here are just um i i stamped uh with embossing ink and then just put embossing powder down uh just to add a little structure and color to the black paper so here is the spine of it and that's again just painted black with some embossing and then here is the back page and here this is um, on the the kit when you do the thumbnail she comes up as lady with a mask but I like to think of her as the white witch and um, sort of this mysterious magical character and here she's holding her little dog and it, she is also uh, surrounded by that shimmery sort of veil and on this page I have given you sort of the the gist of um, what this journal is about it's about Halloween and before it was Halloween it was called All Hallows Eve and you can see how the Halloween came into that. Hallows had to do with um, November 1st being All Saints Day and um, a, a day to remember those who passed before. 
and in the Christian religion um, to remember the saints as in All Saints Day. But on the 31st, going into November 1st, thousands of years ago, um, Samhain is how you pronounce this, was a pagan festival uh, celebration of the end of the harvest season and preparation for going into the darkness and, and deadness of winter. So we have this merging of this pagan uh, Samhain with All Saints Day, and it came to be that the night before All Saints Day, the 31st of October, was All Hallows Eve. Uh, and then November 1st is All Saints Day, and for the Celts, it was also Samhain. And that was all part of uh, Celtic tradition and lore. Pagan means like non, um, uh, non-traditional Christian and other religions. Uh, think of the Greeks and mythology and the belief in the gods and goddesses. So for the harvest in the Greeks uh, tradition, it would have been Demeter and then Persephone, her daughter, going to the underworld. So with Samhain, uh, it had uh, its own tradition of um, different characters. And it was a time where they thought that the earth was at kind of a portal between the living and the spirit world. And so that's what Halloween or All Hallows Eve became. And that's where we're going to visit. So opening it up, here we have, and whoop, let me get into it. It's always full, even though I try to hold back. Uh, on the inside cover, I basically used the same techniques that I talked about with the black paper and all, and the embossing. But I also put on a, a neutral, um, kind of architectural um, uh, paper, and it has all, it's sort of a gazebo, it has all these vines. And I used a lot of these neutrals, as you can see, so that when I did put the colors of fall, the golds and the oranges and reds and, and all of that, and even the black, it would really pop. And so here we have the celebration of the harvest, we've got the pumpkin patch, uh, and all of that, and this beautiful woman, is she a witch? Is she just a beautiful woman dressed in black? We don't know, but she really pops against that gold and all, and that's why I made it that way. And so going in, we're starting with the mysterious crypt, and this is, again, another black and white um page that I enlarged. It, it was more of just the digital image of this doorway, and I enlarged it for a whole page. And then with an X-Acto knife, I cut a door in it because this was a doorway. It just was solid looking. And so I put a door in it, and I have the bats flying out. And here we're welcome to October and our witch here flying into the night. And here again, we have our white witch and all. And the bats, I just made my own Google document with them in different sizes. So um, just to give me more variety and for them to fit the page. They're on adhesive, um, adhesive squares. And we're going to turn the page. And we're at the beginning of this harvest season. And... This is a season, like I said, of spirits and a lot of fortune telling. And here is a young couple, and the woman has come to this old woman, this fortune teller, to have her palm read and know the future. And at that time, in you know, whether it's thousands of years ago or even a hundred years ago, over a hundred, before science and technology had advanced enough for people to to you know have answers to illness and you know why crops died or plague came to town, um, there was a lot of fear of the unknown, and so having your fortune told was a way to feel a little bit more like you were in control.
here we have this beautiful image of a witch. Uh, and actually, I have titled this Pagan Earth Mother. And the pagan belief system uh, early on was based much more in a matriarchal society, which means women were held higher, and especially the mother, because life comes from the mother. And uh, food, you know, is often associated with the mother as the provider. And so goddesses, or in this case, um, uh, you know, wise woman, or if you want to call her an early witch, she would have been associated with, you know, good fortune. And if she was happy and you celebrated her, the thought was, well, then you'll have a good harvest and you will survive the winter. The Saxons called her Wicca, or the idea of a witch. And so here we have another page, just some festive things for Halloween. Uh, I've put an owl here, or owls playing cards for wisdom. Okay, and the wisdom of the Earth Mother and the um, Mother Goddess. And here's an owl taking some fairies there. So we're moving into cooler weather, and here we have the moon, the days are growing shorter, um, the whole cycle of, you know, rebirth and the summer growing season, and now the fall coming and things dying back, and the harvest is occurring, and here we have this cute little uh, young witch here in costume says, this is a from a quote page in the Poe Halloween, uh, Once Upon a Midnight Dreary. I'm sure you recognize that. And here's another page just showing, how, you know, the season. Uh, it's shortening down to the cold and darkness of winter. And here it says, all that we see or seem is but a dream within a dream. And that's another Poe quote. For this part, I made um, this page out of a manila envelope, one of the smaller sizes. And so I stitched it on the sides, but I did put a little pocket in, oops, in there. I wanted those little crows to be right there on the edge. And I also have a young witch here. And uh, Samhain, or Halloween, are both known as nights of mischief making. And, you know, old beliefs were that if the spirits were about, and maybe they were evil spirits or sort of mean spirits, you know, they might, you know, mess with your field or uh, your animals, that kind of thing. And so people would um, put out food and, and different things to try to please the spirits. And people also carried lanterns on those nights, not only to see in the darkness, but to potentially scare away any spirits that might have approached them. Here in this uh, painting, we have fairies about, too. So the idea of fairies is also associated with Halloween. Now, here you see this young witch with a broom. And... Uh, here I have walking stick. What that's referring to is many, say, older women, maybe widows or spinsters who lived alone uh, and were very poor. Because remember, even up to 100 years ago, men mainly controlled the money. And uh, they often had to get to a village or a town and couldn't afford horses or a carriage, and they would use walking sticks. And some were so poor that they used their brooms as their walking sticks. Now, the problem is that some of those women, when something bad happened in the village, some of those women were accused of witchcraft. And, you know, as we know, the witch trials of the Middle Ages um, and the, the witch burnings, you know, a lot of them were just women who were wrongly accused and had done nothing. But because they didn't have the answers of science and technology, they didn't understand why bad things might happen. And rumors started that witches or these women 
had these cauldrons. Now, this is like a soup pot that you, anybody would have on their fire for their meals. But they started to associate that with the idea that uh, witches were looking for your soul and were soul eaters. And if they caught you, they would put you in their cauldrons. And so that's kind of where that idea came from. And it's really, it's sad, you know, sad for these older women. And we turn to this two-page spread. And real quick, I'm going to show you how I made this. Uh, at the Graphics Fairy, there is this uh, image. And I think this is in the Masquerade Ball Bundle. And I just enlarged it. And I also printed it on heavier cardstock. So this is a thinner version. And when, when it was on the heavier cardstock, I fussy cut it out, the whole thing. But I ended up using this half. And so then my issue was I wanted this to be like a window, but I needed to have the hinge. And so I just sort of finagled here. I put some jelly print on the back and finagled a little hinge here. There isn't one on the top, but it still seems to work okay. So, uh, you know, maybe think that out if you want a better hinge on that before you cut it all. But um, I wanted this page to have this window. And here we have, again, another uh, fortune teller. And she is reading this girl's palm. And a lot of younger girls around the time of Samhain or Halloween wanted their fortunes to find out, would they marry, a, you know, a, you know, would they find a husband and would he be good looking and treat them well? Because remember, again, that their future depended on the stability of a husband financially and for protection. And so they wanted to know, is there a husband in my future? She's also uh, maybe doing a reading of tarot cards there. Now, uh, along with the, the broom issue and the, the witch issue, as uh, Christianity rose uh, in, in society worldwide and more male-dominant uh, governments and, and religious leaders came in, women, you know, that earth goddess, were put, you know, uh, into a more subservient role. And when it was, you know, clear that maybe they weren't going to do that, it was uh, often to make them seem vilified. And the idea of the witch and the old woman who should have been a wise woman was now the crone, that old woman with the broom that's going to maybe catch your soul and put it in her cauldron. And so this is also a lot of what led to those witch hunts. It was a way to exert power over women who were, you know, maybe somewhat of um, leaders in the community or at least had some status and all. So here we go with that one. Moving on this one. Along with, you know, the idea of the witch trials here, I put in a journey on the road must begin because women had to flee for their lives. Or in many cases, you know, if they were accused of being a witch, um, you know, it was sort of a, a no-win situation. Here's another one of those weather vanes. And this one has a witch on it there. So we open it up and we have this beautiful witch uh, I think it's an actress from the Victorian times, but look at her beautiful costume there and um, pointing to the night sky and all. And we have the bats again. And down here is a, a real cute little uh, card that I turned into a pocket, a tuck spot. And this little clip here is just a paper clip that I used the dominoes uh, from one of the, the Halloween, uh, like retro Halloween, something like that, uh, bundles, and you get a sheet of dominoes. And so I just glued part of the paper clip between the two, and then it just slides on like that. 
And here we have, here we have another little witch and her pussy cat and our witch on the broom. She's actually, I realized, the one in the doorway. And here is a, a neat uh, painting, and it's this old witch talking to a tree. And I just stamped some confusing, you know, spells or whatever it is she's trying to tell the tree. Because in Celtic tradition, nature was all personified. So the trees were listening. The flowers might be talking about you. Think, it, think about like uh, the Wizard of Oz and what Dorothy comes across when she, uh, the house lands on the Wicked Witch of the West and she starts her journey. This says Bewitched. And here I cut down a longer quote, and you probably will recognize parts of this. And um, it says, a thousand miles with a single step. And this is just an image um, I wanted to create without using the whole quote and to create, to capture that idea of magic. And, uh, it made me think of the TV show Bewitched where she would just wiggle her nose and, you know, disappear, that kind of thing. So a thousand miles with a single step. So sometimes if you aren't going to use a whole quote, uh, think about, you know, taking particular words to get across whatever it is you're trying to say. So here we have this two-page spread as well, and another young witch, and oh, this tree that's probably listening. And that was on a jelly print. And we open up, and this is a night of fun and games and trick-or-treating for these young children. And off to the side here, we have the raven, um, and I just put this witch's hat. It's like the same one as this little girl is wearing, and it's on a dimensional adhesive just to dress up our, our raven a little bit. And here we have um, an owl band serenading, and against a jelly print here. This is one of the bohemian women, and I just called her a traveler, kind of a sorceress. And the little fairy girl riding a butterfly. And this is a little darker, Poe-like image, man's real life. And here we have a vulture and this tree. So that one's a little, a little less uh, cutesy Halloween. Here we have a fairy listening in. Another one of the dominoes. And a little boy is up there blowing out candles, maybe at a Halloween party. And we have a fairy on a dragonfly uh, coming in to, you know, watch the festive time with the children. And maybe they're in a pumpkin patch. And as you can see, I used a lot of dimensional dots behind these different things, um, these images, just to create depth. And so here, we're going to go to this page, and this looks more like the Wicked Witch of the West, if you ask me, from the Wizard of Oz. And she's obviously out for no good, looking to cause trouble for somebody. And we're going to learn about where the name Jack-O-Lantern came from. Let me turn the page here. So Jack-O-Lantern came from... Um, you know, as the story goes, a man named Jack, who was very stingy and he, you know, would pull pranks and really not do very, um, very mean things. And when he died, he was kept out of heaven and the devil didn't want him either. And so he threw him into purgatory with a piece of coal. And so Jack had to take his piece of coal and he hollowed out a turnip, which again, a turnip is sort of like, you know, along the lines of a gourd, like a pumpkin. Uh, and this is in Scotland and Ireland. And so he used a turnip, like on a stick, to light his way as he searched for how to get out of purgatory. 
And so then we have, as we go here, these little children uh, with their lanterns, and those probably are pumpkins. Uh, and we have this tree, an owl talking, and it says voices whispering in the trees. So again, it's that personification uh, of nature that Celtic tradition, you know, said you need to be aware of how you talk about, you know, whatever, and be respectful of the trees and the flowers and the animals. And so now we'll open it, and it opens this way. And here I use this cat, uh, and I named him Stingy Jack. He, you know, to represent Jack, our, our stingy uh stingy farmer who's roaming purgatory he's a rebel and boy this bird looks irresistible to him and on this page we have the raven the poem set to music by poe and these are more of those little dominoes uh and i i just instead of making them into the paper clips i just you know made a little collage with this black and white graphic now here we have two pages, uh, and I've kept it sort of gloomy colors, the blues and the greens, and, you know, sort of dark or subdued. And this one says, a dumb supper. Now, that doesn't mean a stupid supper. That means a silent supper, a meal where no one talks. And why? The reason is... There was a belief that if everybody sat around and was silent, spirits might come and visit, maybe even old, uh, you know, ancestors. And so sometimes for a party, they would have a dumb supper. And here are some cards to go with it. This cat on a jack-o'-lantern carriage with his rats and a witch in a hurry, maybe to go to the dumb supper. And this one is just such a beautiful <clears throat> representation of fall. And on the other side, here I have excites the sensitive soul to tears because this young girl is having a Halloween nightmare. And uh, she's very upset by the witch and the clown. And then this is just a decoupage napkin of some cute owls. So, moving on to this page, we're going to be going to a more elegant night uh, for celebrating Halloween. And here we have a frog prince, and he is maybe getting his fortune read with these cards by a beautiful bohemian fairy and all i did is i cut out this photo of this bohemian woman and put some butterfly wings on her for that effect uh, with the spiders they're just fussy cut out and put on adhesive dots and on to this page again looking at things personified we have a little bird woman sweeping up leaves and an owl here, and I put him right there because the paper behind him says, Second Grand Masquerade Ball, Night Owl Dancing Club. And the word owl is behind him. Now he's holding a Halloween card. It says Halloween Greetings. And he's doing that uh, to show hospitality, to be polite to any roaming spirits out there. Like I said, there was a fear of, you know, if a spirit became angry or a witch, that um, it might, you know, kill your livestock or, you know, make the, make the vegetable uh, garden die, that kind of thing. So showing respect and um, kindness were important. So here we have a little Halloween greeting, some other little Halloween cards. This little girl with her cats. Ooh, and that witch again. Always looking for trouble. And here it says knock on wood. And we say knock on wood to kind of ask for good luck. Like, my car hasn't broken down lately. Knock on wood. I hope it doesn't. 
And knock on wood was a way to knock on wood, like knock on a tree, was a way to show respect. And I'm trying to think, did I open that? Oh, I need to go back one. Sorry. I forgot to open this page. You probably knew that. Um, and it was a way to show respect. Because again, in the spirit world, who knew who might be around? And so you would knock on wood like this tree to ask for help or safety. Here is a, a wise woman, fortune teller, uh, reading the tea leaves of this young woman, probably looking for a husband. There's some more. It says, while I pondered. So again, you can see I used a lot of little excerpts taken from quotes. I just cut them uh, down. And it says, who shall say where the one ends and where the other begins? That means life and death, according to Poe. And here we have, it looks like a funeral for a fairy princess or a fairy queen. And down here we have a sorceress and this uh, image of a skull on a book with a candle. And that's from Poe's Halloween bundle, I think. And here is this cute little card. It says, were I the fairy godmother who came to bless your birth, instead of granting wishes three, I'd give you all the earth. And so again, that idea of can we foretell the future? Can the fairies and, and sorceresses and wise women uh, help us and, you know, to safety and, and happiness? And so now we can go on to this page spread. We're at a ball. It's a ghoulish ball, but it's a party nonetheless. And so here, these two pages are titled Mumming and Guising, because one way to protect yourself, uh, you know, according to Celtic law, was um, to wear a costume or a mask. And if you were out on the night of All Hallows' Eve, that would hopefully confuse any spirits that were looking to cause trouble. And they might think you were one of them, or they might be afraid of you if they found your costume or your mask frightening. And so using the word mumming here, think of the term mummy, like a mummy is, you know, uh, the remains wrapped um, in cloth. Well, that came to represent wrapping yourself in an, a costume or a mask, and it was called mumming. It was also called guising. And guising, think of the word disguise. And the second part of disguise is this, you know, spelling. If you say disguising yourself. And so that's what it means again, is to be in costume. And so here we have this elegant couple, the skeleton woman in her beautiful dress. This is a jelly print behind, and they're here for the party. Here is a, a little threesome of beautiful witches uh, looking at a book, maybe a book of spells. And then down here are some more party goers or witches, you know, there for the party. And this beautiful witch uh, she reminds me of the, the wife in the Adams family. And I've put some cute cards in here, again, celebrating Halloween. And this is a little book I just put together with some of the little cutouts from the uh, Edgar or the Poe's Halloween bundle, I think it's called. And I just made a little flip book into it. Here's from Cask of Amontillado, and this is Fortunato being walled up alive in the catacombs by jealous, angry, cruel Montresor. And so that goes in there, too. And here, entering maybe the ballroom or some room at this um, party. What's on the other side? <gasps> The Wicked Witch of the West from the Wizard of Oz. And she looks like she's creeping up on someone. So the Wicked Witch 
the actress who played her was actually a school teacher. And I'm a school teacher, so I felt a connection there. And she auditioned for the role of Glenda the Good Witch. And when she auditioned, they felt, oh, you'd be great in The Wizard of Oz, but not Glenda. We'd like you for The Wicked Witch of the West. And so I'm sure the kind uh, school teacher was thrilled to be hired as an actress in this movie. And then she realized, wait, you think I'd make a better Wicked Witch of the West? That's sort of a backhanded compliment, I think. Now, here you see in this black and white kind of architectural doorway, uh, I did this on the first page, too. I added jelly print scraps uh, just to add color to the page um, and, and give it a little feel there. And then here, oh, we're at the last page. And the party is over and, and winter is coming. And here is our poor old witch. Or maybe she's just a widow who doesn't have much except her nice cat. And she's weary. And she's going to be spending a cold winter in her little cottage there. But here's a young, beautiful witch. And uh, maybe that's Glenda the Good Witch. I don't know. And then I ended on this page. It's just a reminder of the celebration of the harvest, the celebration of being thankful, and to cherish every moment. Because life is a cycle for all living things, with birth and growth and living, and ultimately with death. And we need to cherish all that we have in life. And then here, I just ended uh, the back of the binder on the note of uh, Halloween, the Devil's Night. And we have an image of the Headless Horseman here chasing Ichabod Crane. And some figures again from all of the Halloween lore. And I hope you enjoyed that and took away some new information about Halloween. Remember, the Graphics Fairy has so many wonderful pieces for you to use. Uh, this is a printable journal page. You could easily make either side into a cover or use it as a page or a divider. Uh, and printables like a lot of the fussy cut uh, things you saw me use in here. In fact, here's this uh, mushroom right there. Uh, this is uh, just a printable that you can pull up, and it's from the Mushroom and Owls um, kit. And, uh, you know, really it's a one-stop shop job at the Graphics Fairy. Um, so many, you know, thousands of images for you to choose from, print out, some even resize. So I had a lot of fun bringing this to you today, and thank you for listening. And happy fall. We're a little early, but it'll be here before you know it. Thank you. Bye-bye.